but it took me a minute to be comfortable with where I was because I was looking at those other places and I was looking at those other podcasts and being like, okay, I'm not doing enough. I'm not, maybe I need to do some more. What are they doing? How are they getting the word out? And God had to remind me that I called you for this. You are, this is your assignment. Their assignment is their assignment. Your assignment is your assignment. And if you keep looking in your other lane, trying to get to where they are, you're going to miss whatever you're supposed to get here. Hey family, I'm Felicia and you're doing life with Lakeisha on Living Her Truth. Welcome to the Living Her Truth podcast, where we have honest conversations about what it means to live a purpose-driven life. I am your host, Lakeisha Woodard from LakeishaWoodard.com, the place where women receive the tools necessary to feel seen, heard, and supported while pursuing their purpose. And now every week you'll learn those same tools through candid and transparent conversations. Felicia, girl, thank you so much for saying yes to having this conversation with me today. Oh, you are welcome. I'm so happy to be here. I'm excited for you to be here. So with every episode, I like to just talk about how I come to know the person that I am talking to. And this episode is no different. This conversation is so different. So how I come to know Felicia, funny story. So with having a podcast, one of the, the great ways to draw in listeners and to promote your podcast is to be guests on other people's podcasts. And Absolutely. I'm sure to, you know, talking on other people's podcasts, right? And so I was doing research on just finding different podcasts that I can pitch myself to. And so I ran across a podcast called Slaying Self-Doubt and listened to a couple of episodes and was like, man, this will be a great podcast for me to um, have a conversation on. But at the time, I, it was just Felicia. It was just her talking and doing solo episodes. So I wasn't really sure because normally if a podcast is just solo episodes, that normally means that they don't necessarily bring on guests, right? True, and so I true. Was just like, well, let me put her on a list anyway. So I had her, you know, on my list, put all the information down. I hadn't pitched her yet, but she was definitely on my list of, of people to, to pitch because I was going to sit on and think about it. Because like I said, she was only doing solo episodes. And so um, getting together my pitch, but I'm also a part of a um, Facebook group um, for business entrepreneurs. And it's an accountability group. And it's a really, really great group. I absolutely love this, this group. Yes. And, uh, and, it's, and the people in the group are so supportive and so active. And so I'm going through the Facebook group. And I see this post of this, <laughs> of this woman who's like, you know, hey, I'm looking for guests to be on my podcast. And I'm like, that name is familiar <laughs> and so you know i'm like and she you know has i think you had a picture of your podcast of the logo i something. think so yeah yeah and i'm like slaying self doubt i'm like where do i know that from <laughs> i don't know that from from somewhere and so um I think I may have commented on it, commented on that, on that. I post. think so. Yeah, I think you I, did. I, think I commented on it. And so in this particular um, Facebook group, there was, um, they do, we do challenges in this group. And one of the challenges was to pitch ourselves, right? Yep. So like a pitch competition. And so I go to my, my pitch list because the competition had, had started and I go to my pitch list and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> That's where I know it from. She's <laughs> on my pitch list. So I was just like, okay, so it is confirmed. I am going yep. to pitch her <laughs> to be on her podcast. <laughs> I know. That is so funny because I remember that that was the first thing that you said was like, I was already, I already was going to pitch you. And then this came up. I was like, Really? I'm always like in awe when people say like, oh, I listen to uh, other than people that I know, you know, like you assume your well, you would assume that your family and friends would listen to it. But other than people that you are, you know, interacting with on a regular basis. But I was just like, you listen to me? You, you want to be on my podcast? <laughs> 
Yep. Yep. Yeah. And I found the podcast just by literally doing um, random Google searches yep. on, on podcasts, the different podcasts that, you know, that's out there. Because I was looking, you know, specifically for um, podcasts where I can go and just like, share my story, talk about, you know, self-awareness because I haven't gotten comfortable just yet. We're going on, you know, um, like business podcast, if you will, and Mm -hmm. doing a transition, you know, over into it because I know living her truth, we talk about business, but not really talk about business. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, so when I ran across the your your podcast, Slaying Self Doubt, I'm like, oh, that's a no brainer. Of course, <laughs> right? Of course. It makes so much sense. And um and our podcast and the conversations that we have are so aligned. And you guys just in case yes. You know, yes, I've already recorded the, the episode is going to is going to drop. So yes, I've already been on her podcast because I pitched her and she said yes. <laughs> yes, yes. I think your episode was uh, probably it's like three weeks ago because it was during uh March right before all of this stuff with mm-hmm. COVID kind of happened it was I want to say it's the second week of uh, second week of March but yeah I love the conversation I was like so excited like talking to you the whole time I just I, I got so much joy out of it and then I was just like oh she got a podcast too and so I was just like let me go ahead and pitch her back <laughs> yep 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 and sent the sent the perfect pitch so i'm gonna have to yeah. put uh, the link in the in the show notes so you can go over to slaying Step out and hear my episode on her podcast. yes yes it was a great so, episode yeah yeah so tell us how did you get on the path of helping women with self-doubt like how did that even start uh, so for me, it started because I was trying to help myself in the first place. Um, I had gotten to a point in my life where I just really was wanting more and I felt like I needed a change and I felt like I needed some empowerment and encouragement and it's very interesting how um god works is that he will use your situation and your story and your testimony to be able to empower other women so i actually started slaying self-doubt slaying self-doubt actually started as a small group within my church it was literally called something else at first Mm -hmm. um but i was uh volunteered to be a small group leader so in my wait, profession wait wait, 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 wait wait did you say volunteered yes I was volunteered <laughs> actually and and on top of that I was volunteered on a meeting I wasn't even at I was absent that day and came back and somebody said oh we recommended you to be a small group leader I said well where was I they was like oh you wasn't here that day I was like how you going to, they was like, but we voted, the group voted who should be, a, and they voted me, and I was just like, okie dokie, so, um, I gotta, I gotta in, use that Felicia, volunteer, okay, I, listen, so, um, what's interesting about that is that, um, even in my professional career, I'm a, I was a leader, and so, um, it's kind of like, a, every situation I kind of been in, it would be like, leadership, or a coach role, or something like that, so, it wasn't, too far-fetched that they thought it would be me I just didn't think that I was ready for that type of leadership because when you talk about leading people in small group you're talking about your you know um spirituality and you're talking about your growth and where you are and as far as I was concerned I felt like I was still very uh young in my faith walk a little bit um just because I wasn't actively pursuing it like I was doing the normal things but I wasn't like what I would assume to be like somebody who's like spiritually mature to be teaching other women but you know God put it on me so I did it I actually it was like I said the group was called something completely different and then um in January of 2017 God was like you're going to use the name slaying self-doubt and I was just like uh okay (laughs) like I didn't know exactly what that meant Um, And so I changed the name of the group and I also started a Facebook page. I mean, Instagram page. I didn't put anything on it, but I just started the page and changed the name of the group. I changed the name of the group. All of the original members left. And then I got 12 new people, new women, just in a matter of like two weeks. And I was just like, 
okay. Like I had already been with those girls a couple of months and they old when the name changed, they went away. And these next, the, those other women came a, a part of it. Um, and so I started with that and they all said the same thing. It was the name. It was the name. And so I wasn't really sure how it was going to be. But as I, that was three years ago. So in the last three years, I have um, now, uh, I have three small groups. I'm actually a coach of some leaders as well. And in the midst of that is where Slam Self Doubt the Business and the podcast came to. So it really started with, um, it really started with small groups. So I always tell them, y'all are my original village because I was doing this scared and nervous. And, you know, the Lord, the way the Lord works, I just, I, I, I couldn't have seen it coming. I just thought I was just supposed to be a small group leader. And he was like, yep, you're going to do that. And this, and this, and this. <laughs> I love that. Everything you just said, all I heard was purpose and self-awareness. Yes. Because so many of us think that, uh, or so many people, because I know I've, I've embraced my purpose, but so many people feel as though they need to find their purpose. And I'm mm -hmm. always constantly telling people, it's not that you need to find it, you need to embrace it. There are yeah. walls and safeguards that's up that's blocking you from really like embracing it and truly seeing what it is, because you were already operating in purpose. Hey family, so real quick, I wanted to pop in and share some exciting news with you. The Living Out Truth podcast has received its first donation and we are so excited and overjoyed about it. Family, you guys have been showing up, showing out and just pouring in the support. And we are so overwhelmed, so blessed and so appreciative of you. And I needed to take a moment to say thank you. Just in case you had no idea that you can support the Living Up Truth podcast through a monetary donation, I want to let you know, yes, you can. All you have to do is go to the show notes of any episode and click on the donate button to give your monetary donation. Whatever God places on your heart to give is exactly what we will receive. And we just thank you for your kindness. Now, back to the conversation. Yes, I am. that's the reason why you were voluntold uh -huh. to, be in that, to be in that position, right? So you was already operating in purpose. And see, that's the thing. We want purpose to be this glorified, yeah. you know, huge, just Beyonce jump out at level. you. Yeah. 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 Beyonce level type thing. And that may not be what it is for you. And that's right. completely okay. And then I hear self-awareness in there because self-awareness, you guys, is twofold. The first half of self-awareness is knowing who you are, your internal, mm -hmm. personal prefaces, resources, intuitions, values, and priorities, right? But it's also, yep. you know, knowing how other people see you. And it's not necessarily how other people see you in a negative light, but other people yeah. can see your talents and skills better than you can. Yeah, like, yes, you they can. It. You've always been in leadership roles, but not to this particular level because you knew you exactly. Was it was a, a, a baby when it came to your faith and your relationship with God. So you thought that you wasn't ready for that. But other yeah. people saw something in you that yes, let them absolutely. know that you are ready for it, right? Yeah. So the, the, the question is, you know, when we're faced with that is whether or not we're going to answer the call. And luckily for you, you answered the call because yeah. once again, you guys, the reason why we need to answer the call, because we don't know what God is planning and what he has up under his sleeve. Because yeah. when she first started out, she had a, one group of women, but when it turned to slay itself out and she was answered the call and was starting to move according to the call that God had put on her life, he cleared out that group and gave her yep. another whole new group of women. So there's no tell yep. why you needed to be positioned in front of those particular 12 women. It just, it just yeah, I always power. say, so you, you have no idea. And on top of that, I always tell, um, so now I'm at 25 women who are under me in a mm -hmm. small group. And then I also lead nine other women who lead their own groups. Um, but I always tell them, and one of the things that 
um, it's a daily thing. So it's not like as soon as it, it clicks, you just like, oh, yep, I'm living in my purpose. And that's that. It's a, it's a journey. But I tell you, you do not know what, who is attached to your purpose. So if I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do, someone else is not getting from me what they need. And I mean, that's a heavy, heavy thing to have to understand and deal with. But every day God reminds me that this is where I'm supposed to be. He confirms all the time that uh, you're supposed to do this. This is where you are supposed to be at. Even when you talk about the pictures and how we met, I was petrified about pitch and pray because I... I, I don't like asking people for help. I don't like asking Ooh. people for anything. And so to actually have to put myself out there, like, oh my gosh, when I tell you the anxiety I had the day I just sat down and was like, okay, you're going to write these emails and you just go, go ahead and do it. And you're just going to get it done. And I just was like, just go, 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 go. And even when I received some pitches, I still was just like, oh, somebody, somebody thought of me. Somebody else thought of me. You know, when you said you thought of me, like it was just like, okay, this goes both ways. And so when I think about where I started to where I am right now, I'm like, you're right. Had I not answered the call, I life would be completely different. And I'm, I'm grateful every day that each call that he's given me in each season, I've said yes to, you know, because that's the hardest time. Sometimes it's, um, sometimes it's as simple as starting a small group, right? Sometimes it's bigger than that. And, you know, a part of my journey was one of my calls was to come, come home and to leave my nine to five and be full-time focused on slaying self-doubt. And I, and when he called me to come home, I was like, you do know it ain't a business, right? It's just a podcast. Like, what you want me to come home to do? Like, I'm not really sure. But he told me, I cannot grow you here. You have to come out of there in order to do this. And that was 10 months ago. And so I'm still just like, oh, I'm in awe every day of like, I only really asked for three months, right? Because of course I had to tell my husband, like, you know, the Lord told me to come home, but I'm gonna be here like three months. I asked, I asked him for three. I got six, and then I'm like, I was thinking six, but I'm like, we almost at a year, and I'm still, we are still, God is still providing, things are still happening. We're moving in a forward direction that we both can see where this is going. That it's like, I had to answer that call. I had to get out of that situation to get here. So no, you're right. It has everything to do with answering a call and the self-awareness because I have, I had to know that I have it in me. And I remember, and I use what you, I remember you telling me this and there's a reminder every day that there's power in my voice. Yes. And so I tell myself that every single morning there's power because that's what I'm using right now. I'm using my voice. I'm using my platform. I'm using what God put in me to be able to touch other people's lives. And especially right now, just, in this season like it's what's needed you know and so I just keep every day I just like Lord use me you know that's what I'm here for that is what I'm here for use me and thank you, you yes know, I'm so happy that you said that purpose is a journey that you work on every single day because your purpose I think there's an evolution to it right yeah so the the core which your purpose is doesn't change but it can evolve right it, it can evolve mm -hmm. And it's something that we need to work on every single day. And I want people to really hear what Felicia just said, because don't get it twisted. Like Felicia has a whole bunch of downloads because I had to even reach out to her and be like, dang girl, <laughs> those many downloads in such a, in, in such a short period of, of, of time, you know, because I'm a, a newbie to, to the podcast. But, you know, she hasn't reached a million downloads yet, but look at how much God has blessed her and has yeah. used her with what she has done right now in this moment. Yep. I think a lot of times, you know, we, we get so caught up in the fact that we're not doing things on a massive scale. Uh -huh. and something that I talked about in my little small personal um, Bible study group, because, um, I had to, you know, I battled with that a little bit, you know, because God was calling me to speak, but I was speaking at these, 
you know, in front of these small audiences. Yeah. You know, when I say small, I mean like under a thousand. So I haven't got to a point where I've been in a room speaking to three and five and 10,000 people yet. Yeah. You know, and so, um, you know, I was feeling, starting to feel bad about that. Cause I'm like, mm-hmm. I want to, I know I got millions tied to me. Like where are my millions at? Yeah. But it's just like, but for right now, maybe I need to just focus on the one. Or I'm yeah. just focused on the 300 or just focused on the 500. Like I yeah. pour into them accordingly yeah. so they can get what it is that they need so they can be able to pay it forward. So I guess that's my long winded way of saying, don't despise your small beginnings. Yeah. Yeah. Because like Felicia said, you never know who is tied to your journey. Yeah. So if you skip steps it's a possibility that somebody is not going to get what it is that they need. Cause this is a Absolutely. domino effect. You guys we're connected. Yeah. It's a, it's a domino. It's a domino effect, you know? And I would also say that, um, even in what you saying that, like, mm-hmm. I, I, I know some other people who started the podcast, the same, like somebody, one, um, podcast I listened to, they started literally the day after me. Another one started like a week before different and where we are, like some of them are like in the hundred thousand. Some of them are in, you know, in the hundreds, you know, I, in March, I did a uh, crack 10,000 downloads and I was super excited about it, but it took me a minute to be comfortable with where I was because I was looking at those other places and I was looking at those other podcasts and being like, okay, I'm not doing enough. I'm not, maybe I need to do some more. What are they doing? How are they getting the word out? And God had to remind me that I called you for this. You are, this is your assignment. Their assignment is their assignment. Your assignment is your assignment. And if you keep looking in your other lane, trying to get to where they are, you're going to miss whatever you're supposed to get here. Because what I had to realize is that my journey wasn't just about the podcast right it was about the podcast it was about being able to coach other women it was about the small groups that I still have it was about a bigger bigger plan that I was so focused on just this one thing that it was discouraging me in a way that I was like oh maybe I should stop maybe I shouldn't do this maybe I shouldn't do that and it was like just go back to like I had my mentor tell me Mm-hmm. go back to where you started. Why did you start this whole journey in the first place? What is the, basically, what was the last thing that God told you to do? And it was the podcast. And so I just said, you put your effort into the podcast and you just do that. It is going to reach who it's supposed to reach, period. If it don't reach 10,000, that's fine. If it don't reach 100,000, that's fine too. But the lives that it is changing, that also matters, you know? And so when you talk about talking, you know, in a live audience, like, again, that gives me anxiety. Like I, I wouldn't even, want, I wouldn't even want to do that. Even though I know that's something that eventually he, he's already shown me that's where you'll be. I'm like, I don't want to do that right now. I'm okay being behind this microphone and <laughs> and just talking in my living room. I'm okay with that, you know, but you have to be mindful that you're 300, right? Mm -hmm. in someone else's that's a lot for me like I'm like golly you talking to 500 women at one time you know like I I that would be something that would be achievable for me so Mm -hmm. I think that if we we say we don't um we don't compare and I think it's just about I think comparing is healthy because you got to know what your competition is doing or you have to know what people in your industry are doing so that you can or even know what's what's possible yeah, well, right, to be able to know what's possible and to know where you could actually go if that's the direction you want to go in. But I think that we have to be able to do that without minimizing what we've already done. If you, as long, whatever you're doing is a, is for you, period. That's it. And you can't, don't let nobody else tell you that it's not enough or don't let yourself, you know, um, let that self-doubt that self-doubt creep creep in because all it takes is that one time for you to see one post when somebody says oh they they did this and then you be like man see I don't even know why I'm still doing this see they already got that and that's where I'm trying to be at and then you spend a whole week doubting yourself if this is even your cola and I'm I'm speaking from experience girl that'd be my life (laughs) I'm listening from experience okay (laughs) 
I'd be like, oh man, but I had to really just have the confidence in what God called me to do. And I say, if he want me to get more, he'll find it because he's done everything else. Everything else that he's called me to do, he figured out the people, like you said, he figured out the people that needed to be in my group. He figured out the people that I would, when I did eventually start having people on my podcast, I, I was intentional about that. It just wasn't just going to be anybody. Like I needed people to be vulnerable about their story. Cause I'm telling you my, my life story, you getting all my business. You can't come on my show and be fluffy like that's not it's not gonna work for me because that's not what we're doing here this is a journey and people need to see the vulnerability we see enough filtered stuff every day as it is this this your show my show is a a way for people to realize they are not by themselves they are not the only people going through these things and it's not it doesn't go away just like that no today's a good day tomorrow may be a horrible day okay Mm -hmm. you just keep going you just keep going. So how do we how do we know the difference between when we are experiencing self-doubt and when we're not operating in purpose? And the reason why I ask this question, right, and, and what the difference is, because I truly believe that if we are not operating in purpose, first off, there's going to be difficulty regardless, right? We're going to run through some trials and tribulations. But yeah. I truly believe that when we're operating outside of purpose, we run into a little bit more than what's probably originally planned for us. Yeah. Right. And so when we run into unnecessary, you know, roadblocks, it can cause self doubt because of that. Right. How can we tell the difference from when we are just experiencing natural self doubt from, okay, we're just operating outside of alignment. Um, So I would say personally, I would, I would say this, I think self doubt, is when you're operating in self-doubt is when you know in your gut that you're supposed to be doing it and you are literally talking yourself out of it and talking yourself out of it is um you don't have to say it out loud some of it is is putting it off procrastination is self-doubt i'm i know god is asking me to do this or i know i'm supposed to do that but I'm gonna do it tomorrow. I'm not gonna do it right now or if you say i don't really need to do this do i have to is it when you're it, I, it's when you're questioning if you're supposed to do whatever this thing is so like for me i put it into um uh an example so when i had to start when i knew that i was still going to start um the podcast in general um i was already talking because i told you i was already doing mm-hmm. um uh small groups um when he called me to do podcasting i was like i don't think i want to do that like i don't know if i'm really supposed to but it kept coming up every single time something would happen it kept coming like i don't care if i was looking at tv i don't care if i was listening to i listened to a lot of podcasts but it felt like in that season i was hearing a lot of people or like preachers or certain things would come up it was like you know you know you hear people say write the book you know or like stop the business i kept hearing stop the podcast stop the pod, and it would just be like it's so random like why if, if, if you'll get reminders that that's the thing that you're supposed to be doing And I think self-doubt creeps in when you start to tell yourself the reasons why you can't do it, right? There's nothing stopping you. It's just you are stopping yourself. When you're operating outside of your purpose is when you start doing the opposite of what it is or something completely different. So had I started a YouTube channel or had I said, well, I'm going to do Facebook lives. I'm going to do, and you, you fill it with busyness. You do everything else except for that thing. That is operating outside of your purpose. And you'll know that because it don't work. Everything you try to do outside of what he told you to do, it's not going to work. It ain't going to work for you. That You ain't going to get no listeners, no views. It's that, you know, you're not going to be able to, and you're not understanding why, why isn't this working? It's not working because it's not what you're supposed to be doing. You're supposed to be doing A and you say, I'm going to leave A over here and I'm going to just go do B. Sometimes it's just being comfortable, right? Like you could operate outside your purpose just because walking in your purpose is uncomfortable. It's supposed to be. So instead you do the comfortable thing, right? And you say, well, I'm going to just, instead of me doing that, I'm going to do this instead. And I think that comes with self-awareness of being able to know 
the difference between the two because now in this season I know when I'm operating in the beginning I probably didn't know but I'm very clear about when I'm operating outside of my purpose and with when, when self-doubt is is picking up like it does for me it doesn't take much for me it's a thought really quickly and I notice myself backtracking and I'd be like, well, I don't really have to do that today. I mean, I know God told me to do it, or I might write it down. And then I'd be like, no, nah, I'm going to hold off on it. And it's like I said, it's procrastination. When I'm operating outside of my purpose, I just go do something completely different and nothing works. And then I'm frustrated. I'm overwhelmed. My anxiety goes up. And it'd be like, it's, sis, you're not doing what you're supposed to do. So <laughs> <laughs> that's the problem. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that busyness would get you every single time yes being like super super busy because even before we really just started recording for the podcast I was telling you how I took a mental sabbatical mm -hmm. right because I got so so busy with with AST and then I just felt myself going from one busy wave to the next busy wave and before yeah. that next busy wave came up I said you know what I'm going to like take a pause right here, right? And yeah. just a sabbatical. And I'm so glad that I did <clears throat> because I was able to, you know, really get clear on the fact that <clears throat> I'm not really clear on what I want next or mm. what I want. You guys, <clears throat> you have to understand, I'm not a millionaire yet. Mm. Okay? Let's just, let's, let me just be clear on that, on that right now. I'm not a millionaire yet. AST is not a billion dollar business just yet. I mm -hmm. haven't reached my 1 million downloads on the podcast, you know, yet. Hubby and I haven't traveled all, all around the world yet. However, even though these things haven't happened yet, when I tell you I have done everything in my life that I have wanted to do. Yeah. Everything. Everything. Even like completely embracing and operating my purpose. And I'm not saying this in a bracketalicious type of way. I'm just saying it because I finally was able to slow down enough to get clear on the fact that I have done everything. So yeah. now I need to do an, an, an adjustment to figure out, okay, God, what's the next step? Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've been on TV. I've been on radio. I've been in magazines as it relates to AST. So yeah. what's next? Yeah. So I'm at a, I'm at a point where, and, and I, you know, start off by saying I'm not a millionaire and ASC is not a billion dollar business yet because I want you guys to see and understand that for me, those things are not important mm. in order for me to see myself and my life as a success. Yeah. And, and for me to see, okay, now it's time to, to grow and it's time for me to reconnect with God to see, okay, God, so where are we going next? Yeah. What's next for me to do? But when you are filling your stuff up with with busyness yes it's hard for you to it's hard for you to see that because i was about to go down a road yeah that even though it was um related to ast but that doesn't mean it was in in purpose and in alignment with what i'm supposed to do with ast mm -hmm. I hope you guys caught that you know because you can be busy setting all these goals to do what it is that you think you should be doing, but that doesn't mean that it's necessarily in alignment. Cause like yeah. even Felicia with the YouTube video, she, yep. I mean, she could have done a YouTube channel talking about slaying self doubt, which is probably what she would have done, but it still was out of alignment. Right. Yep. So and then I would say that to say also like, that doesn't mean those things are not going to come right. You <laughs> have to do things in order in when order. you are out of order everything is jumbled up you know so when you start when people start businesses or they start a new venture or when you walk into your purpose i am very clear about where slant self-doubt ends because prior to god giving me the start he gave me the ending i saw that three years before slant self-doubt even entered into my mind even before i was volunteered to be a small i still remember to this day it was my second wedding anniversary and we were driving to atlantic city and I told my husband this vision I kept having and I was like, and this happens and da 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 da. And I was telling him, he was just like, oh, okay. And I was just like, I don't know why, but I keep having the same vision. Then three years later, slaying self-doubt happens. And so as I'm like watching, I'm like, wait a minute. 
I've seen this before. <laughs> and so I'm just like, all of this is in alignment. So sometimes you see the bit and we're, you, sometimes you give in the bigger picture. And so we're rushing to try to hurry up and get to the finish line. Yeah. But like you said earlier, you're skipping steps. And if you out of order, it will mess everything up because you won't be able to get the things that you're supposed to get, the connections you're supposed to make, because there are people you're supposed to meet on this journey. And if you, at step 10, and you miss the people at three, five, and seven, by the time you get to 15, you're going to be like, well, what am I supposed to do here? Because the people that you needed I'm still back at three, five, and seven. And then that's how you find people that got to start over. Like, or they say, oh, I thought this was what I was supposed to do, but I must not. Right. No, you just was out of order because you was doing it in your own strength. And um, secondly, when you start talk about rest, rest is important. Um, I tell my small group members all the time, rest and my clients, like rest is not just about sleep. You have, in order for when you truly, truly rest, everything is open your hands your heart your mind that is the that is when god is pouring into you and you can't if you are filled up if your hands are full if your heart is full if your mind is full you can't receive anything that he given you because you already got other stuff in your hands so you have to be able to give yourself that time to be able to really see so god can tell you what's next but that's also if you did the last thing that he told you to do. So I tell people all the time, you keep getting the same message. It's because you didn't finish, finish the assignment. You got to finish the assignment first. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You got to finish the assignment first. Yeah. I, I don't know about you, but I hate repeating the same thing over and over again. Man, I'm listen. <laughs> okay because i always say gotta i gotta there's something i need to take away from it but it's just yeah more. It's like did we just do this I get already it. <laughs> yes oh my god oh my this is i i get it that's how i yes. felt when i decided uh not to go back to to law school and so mm -hmm. i took time off to do some self-discovery to figure out what my what my purpose is yeah Lord, I was already operating purpose. Yeah. But, you know, I kept bumping my head because I'm going after all these different things. You know, I started a photography business and then I started looking into investing in a laundry mat. Mm -hmm. And then it was like a bed and breakfast I wanted to do. And it's just like, and God just like, are you done? Are you finished? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you finished or not? Nah? <laughs> <laughs> okay, God. Okay. Okay. I hear yes. you. I heard you. Let's let's do this. And things just started falling into place. Like literally, mm -hmm. just started falling mm -hmm. into place and just started to to snowball. And 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 don't get tripped up on what I'm saying to think that there was no roadblocks. You know, I didn't fall. I didn't stumble because a lot happened. Even though the ball was rolling, yeah. a lot happened in that time. You know, yeah. but um. But things started to, but things was falling into place and things just felt good. It felt natural and it just felt right. Yeah. Like, yes, this is that's what that, we That's doing. peace. That is peace. Yeah. That's what that is. When you are operating in alignment, you have a peace about even in the uncomfortable times. Like I said, right now, I'm, you know, I'm not working a full-time job. I'm also not making any money at this present time some of it is because i haven't gotten all the way to the you know full fullness of my products and the things my services that i want to offer um which i know those things will come but i'm at peace i enjoy what i do every single day i enjoy just the learning the new things about myself the things that i didn't think that i knew how to do the creativity that i have the like the plans that he's giving me and i'm like when it's time like you said the ball will start rolling but i'm i'm operating in order like you know so i've had people who've come to me in good you know with good intentions of like oh you should do this oh you should do that oh you and if i started that thing that they suggested versus what God is telling me to do, again, I'd be operating out of order. But mm -hmm. now that I'm doing it in the order that he wants me to, when when that light switch flips on and he's like, okay, now let's go, guess what? I'm gonna be prepared. Cause mm -hmm. I prepare I, you have to lay the foundation first for anything that you're gonna do. Because when he when he's ready to use you, 
you got to be able to have some strong footing because that thing going to be like you you're not going to be able you're not going to expect all of the goodness that comes out of it you're going to be in disbelief and so you got to be ready for it to be able to like like you said stuff going to come at you but when it when you are operating in purpose more good things come than bad and even the the technically bad stuff I, is meant to make you stronger so it's not it's, it's a lesson that you have to learn in it so that you don't have to go through it again you know you just got to make sure you catch it the first time. <laughs> absolutely you know what you what you were saying made me think about a uh, video that i watch um on instagram with patrice washington you guys if you've been following this podcast this far you know who patrice washington is she's episode number three so go check out episode number three on the podcast. But she's somebody that I've been following for a long time. And so um, she hopped on Instagram and, and did a video. And she talked about how um, some of us, she was like saying that there's a lot of coaches out here just saying that, you know, you need to charge $5,000 for your packages or whatever, mm -hmm. right? And so there's a lot of people who are doing that, but don't feel confident in doing it. And she was just like, it's because that, you haven't done the legwork mm -hmm. to justify the outcome that somebody will mm -hmm. believe, you know, that's $5,000 worthy enough. Yeah, yeah. Like you haven't built that confidence yet in, in your mind that you are offering a product or service, you know, that would give people a, a transformation or give them the value that they need where they be willing to pay the five thousand dollars so it so when you was talking about you know how you're not making any money yet but you're doing you're doing the work it made me think about patrice because what she said is so true you have to do the work do the work yeah. first build up that confidence you know yeah. um, master master your skills so that way yep. when it's time to say, you know, and I'm just using $5,000 because that's what she's talked about in the video. So when it's time mm -hmm. for you to throw that $5,000 price on whatever product or service that you're offering, yep. there is no self-doubt. There is no doubt yeah. about whether yeah. or not it's worth the $5,000. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And mean. then if you, because yeah, we don't want to do the work. Yeah. On top of the fact that if you in doing the work means that you've actually technically already been doing it. Right. So when I talk about uh, even before it was necessarily your purpose. So um, I remember speaking to somebody one time and they were talking about their services and what they were offering and they were going to do a collaboration with another um, set of people who do also like event type stuff and she was just saying like well I don't really know because um, you know they've been doing this for this amount of time and this person's well known in the community and I was just kind of like well hold on if I remember correctly your very first event was in 1999 right and she was just like well yeah I guess and so I'm like and this 2020 I'm so I don't care how I don't care how it looked. I don't care if you was an assistant. You did it. You did it. And so every time that you've done it, I don't care how big it was, how small it was. You put that on your resume. I used to tell my staff, every time I ask you to do something, if it's outside of your job description, make sure you write that on your resume. Write it down as a skill. That is your proof that you've done the work. So sometimes we're looking at us to be have done the work right now in this season. No, if you have ever, when I think about um, coaching and giving empowerment, I've been doing it. I mean, I could say all my life, but I can say officially, I've been doing it from since early 2000, right? So I could I could confidently say I've been empowering women for the last 20 years, right? And I have people that I know that I'm connected to that I can say, hey, how have I empowered you? It doesn't have to be a client. It doesn't have to be somebody who paid you for their, your services. You are already doing the work. Sometimes people don't realize everything you need, you already have. It's already in your hand and you're looking for something else or someone else to tell, you know, add that, add this, add that. No, you have everything you need already in your hands and you're already doing it. You just got to open your eyes and, and embrace it. Like you were saying earlier, you have to embrace what it is that you're being called to do. 
Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And and it's so funny that, that you say that. And this is something that I shared on the podcast as well. Go back to the very first episode because I talked about it. You know, I had a vintage session with a friend because I literally had sat down with somebody to brainstorm how to get them up out of their out of their out of their job because they wanted to do something different because it wasn't necessarily, you know, operating from a place of purpose. Like so we sat down and we strategized mm-hmm. with a whole strategy. And I had a vintage session with with a friend and I'm just like you know why can I do this for everybody else but I can't do it for myself and it was my girlfriend who was just like well Keisha you know you always helping somebody out you're so resourceful you have so much knowledge and information you need to figure out a way to track you know the results that you help people with package it up and sell it and it was Mm -hmm. that comment that got my wheels to turn in to make me say, what are you talking about? Like, right. <laughs> like what does that even, even yep. mean? But it mm-hmm. got me on, on track for eventually, you know, starting AST. You have to go to the, to the very first episode of the podcast, you know, to go into it. Cause I don't want to rehash it all out. Cause it's a long story. But again, that's, the, that's proof to what you just said yeah. that I was already operating in purpose because that was something because mm-hmm. she wasn't the first one and she wasn't right. the first one obviously because I have a business around it now but she wasn't the first one I had been doing that all while I was going through law school I was yeah. you know I was doing that like people at the corporate jobs where I would work they would come to me and be like you know Keisha you know can can you help me to um, put together like a presentation because I want to ask for a raise. I've been working here for 13, 14 years and I don't know how to mm-hmm. act. So we'll sit down and put together like a whole plan. I have been doing all this, operating in purpose, yep. you know, and not really seeing it and recognizing it. But that's where self awareness come in. That second part of self awareness come in because somebody yep. pointed out to me that, hey, not only is this a, 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 a talent, a strength, and a skill, and you're good at it, but people will pay for that. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Like, hmm, okay. Right. But you know, it that was over a what ten year time span from the time I decided mm. that I wasn't gonna go back to law school to the time I I started AST. Ten years, you guys. I don't think I've shared yeah. that on the podcast. Ten years. So don't think all this happened overnight because it nope. did. It does not. And. Yeah. Before I went to law school, I was operating in purpose. Because if you know my story, you know I started speaking about sexual abuse and sharing my story of survivor sexual abuse at 18 when I was in college. Uh-huh. So I have been doing this for all. So when people say that, you know, it, it takes 15 and 20 years for a person to be an overnight success, like that's real talk. I've been doing yeah. it for, for a long time. I've been speaking for a long time. Because even with my speaker coach, like what you told your friend who went back to 1999 with the event, because even my speaker coach was just like, girl, if you don't put, tell people that you've been speaking since you was 18, because you've been speaking since you was 18. Yeah. Like that's Absolutely. That Absolutely. <laughs> that counts. Count. But so. that's what... That's where the self-doubt comes in when you're like, huh, I'm not really doing it. And it's like, yes, you are. You, you are. All re- you were already doing it. I don't care if you, and that person was an event planner. I was like, I don't care if you put on a five-year-old's birthday party. That is an event. If somebody called you and asked you for your help in designing anything, putting anything together, I'm like, I remember her going to uh, um, somebody else's wedding one time and apparently something happened with that person's coordinator for that day or whatever it just was not a good setting she ended up as a guest taking it on and went and just helped the person out and so I'm like even in though I was like that wasn't even that that's how you know when you do it for free and that's what people say if it's something that burdens you or you are willing to do it for free and it brings you joy that is your purpose that is what you were created to do that thing that nobody else can do but you and when you do it and you put your hands on it people are like man wow i you know, i could never do that how do you do that i don't understand what you know yada yada, yada. i'm so grateful that i talked to you when i think about those things i think about um you know uh y- you know like when you do it i i think about you i know one thing that um i had a clarity session one time um 
with somebody who told me to ask about 10 people or more, 10 to 15 people, mm -hmm. um, what do you do really, really well? Mm -hmm. And so I was like, okay. You know, so I went through high school girlfriends, college, work associates, my previous supervisors, family members, supervisors, my spouse, like all different types of people. And it was amazing to me that everybody pretty much said the same thing, that I was a great listener. I gave great advice. I was um, encouraging. I came across as very non-judgmental. And I was just like, me? <laughs> But it was all powerful stuff. And then my coach was able to tell me, okay, after we break these things down, these are the things that you are good at. These are the areas that you need to focus on. And once I looked at it, I was like, I'm already doing those things. I'm already, these are people who, who haven't necessarily needed my services or needed anything from me, but they could see it. So I would encourage people to reach out to the people around you and ask them, what do I do really, really well? Like when you think of me, what is it that you think like she would be, or he would be really good at doing this and see what they say. Sometimes you're already doing it. You just don't know it. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and also ask people too, um, uh, the opposite of that like what do you how do you see me like what do you see in me when I get into when I get in my own way like you know uh, sometimes, that's a good one yeah because sometimes we don't see that as see that as mm -hmm. well and I mean because we need that constructive criticism too in order to yeah. better improve ourselves and in order to really know why we act the way we act or think the way that we think and things like that because we just we just, we're just not um, aware sometimes, right? That's what a self-awareness yeah. is. And I, I think, think yeah, people. and I think the other part to that is that, that uh, back to your original question, that you ask that question, especially to like the top five people that you vent to, mm -hmm. they would be able to tell you what self-doubt looks like because those people are the people that are talking you out of whatever it is that mm -hmm. you're talking yourself out of. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So if you talk to that person, they're going to be the yeah. one to say, okay, every time we have a conversation, these are the things that you say, this is how you say you're feeling. And yeah. so you write those things down so that when you're doing it, you can say, oh, that's self-doubt talking. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, this, that's my anxiety showing up. That's my nervousness showing up. That's me, my imposter syndrome showing up. And those people will be able to tell you what that looks like because Self-doubt is exactly that. It's yourself. But sometimes we don't see it. We think it's rationalized, rational, like us being rational about whatever the situation is or us thinking through. I just want to run this past you real quick. Tell me what you think. You already know why. Why are you running it past people? You already know. You just want them to help you talk you out of it or talk you into it. <laughs> so I, I don't, you know, so it's like, check with yourself first. Like, is this, what's the facts about this? What is real about this situation right now? Am I supposed to, can I do this? If the answer is yes, then, you know, do it. Just do it. Just do yeah. it. Just do I it. mean, it's easier said than done, but you know, just do it. It is, <laughs> it is. But if y'all need help, you know, with self-awareness, hit me up and self-doubt, hit up Felicia. Cause that's what we got. <laughs> That's right. You, we got you. You got to, got to cover it. But this has been a, an amazing conversation, friend. Oh, yes, I know, I know. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. Absolutely, absolutely. But before before we end it, give us okay. an Audible recommendation uh, or or a book recommendation. But I'm addicted to Audible, so I love Audible. That of a, of a book that you have read or listened to that has impacted your life in a positive way. Um, so I will say, actually, I'll give you two. Um, so the first one is called um, A Confident Heart by Renee Swoop. I think that's the last name. Um, it was the very first book that I read about self-doubt and just listening, I mean, reading her words. At that moment, I realized I am not by myself <laughs> and I'm not crazy. Like that was like, it, it, it was like a light bulb went off. Um, and the second book I would say would be um, Don't Settle for Safe by Sarah Jake Roberts. Um, 
<laughs> I have another one, but I like those. I like those two. That one really helped me to process some things. And then during that season, I was struggling with forgiveness. And there was a portion of her book where she talked about forgiveness and we had to write this prayer and insert people's names into it. And I had about like 20 names that I had. So I, I was writing for a minute because I had to write those prayers out to receive and ask for full forgiveness myself. Um, and so um, those two books, definitely, I find myself like, kind of thinking back to some of the things that these women have said that's just like okay no you got this these are the things that you need to do and this is what kind of like you know propelled me forward you know what I, I I laughed and giggled because you're probably the fifth person who has recommended Don't Settle for Say and it's so good. Maybe, <laughs> it's, it is it's a good book because I, I have it on audible <laughs> I listen to it too it really is a a good book I love Sarah Jakes Roberts I probably need to do like a podcast panel episode on just that book alone. Maybe I need to do yeah, that. Yeah. Bring back, you know, some of the guests, you and some of the other women who have suggested this book so we can just like talk about it because this yeah. book is constantly coming up. So you guys definitely check the Audible Recommendations link in the show notes and get the book. If you have been following my podcast and listen to every episode, you know I ain't lying. This is probably the fifth time somebody <laughs> has recommended this, this book. So if you have heard this book recommendation for the fifth time and you have yet to read the book, you got to read the, the book. book. I'm going to need you to read and listen to the book because obviously God is trying to get it to somebody, get the message yeah. to somebody that they need to read this book. So yes, yes. You need to read the book. I probably just need to do a podcast episode on the book <laughs> for sure. <laughs> to get into this book. <laughs> yes, it's, it is it is really, really good. But last question. So when describing the meaning of living your truth, I want you to complete this phrase. What is your third word when you hear these two words put together? Okay. Okay. Self-awareness, purpose, and intentional. Okay, I like that. I like that because um, I, yeah, that, that brings I the feel two like together. I'll, yeah, because I think you have to be intentional about self awareness, and you have to once you're in your purpose, you have to be intentional about your purpose, um, and so every step of the way there has to be some intentionality in it or you'll just get lost in the sauce. And I've been lost in the sauce long enough. So I have to be intentional about, you know, really understanding where I am during the seasons that I'm in it. So yeah, intentional. I love that. That's, that's good. I, I agree 100%. You have to be intentional. Yeah. Yeah. Every single day. You have to be intentional. Every single day. Mm -hmm. It'd be hard, but you got to do it every day. <laughs> Friend, my friend for life. Thank you so oh, much. Yes, ma'am. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. You are amazing. Thank you.